What is up guys? Happy Sunday and welcome back to Gringa Land. Today we are finally talking about a micro brand and we're talking about a micro brand I've kind of had a thing for ever since Jody of This One More Watch reviewed a couple of their pieces. We're talking about the most playful watch on the market right now, the Studio Underdog Watermelon and Desert Sky. So let's get into it. actually been hoping and like wishing Studio Underdog would ever want to work with me ever since I've seen, well, any of their pieces. So this watch has been launched in three quirky colors. So there's, oh, there's that one. <laughs> An unsolicited wrist check. Oh, also my husband watched Poppy's here as well. Hi. Hi. 36 subscribers and counting, BP. I know that is annoying. So there's the watermelon. The desert sky. And the goofy panda. And all three of them bring me life and joy and happiness. And this brand is actually really punk rock. So if you go onto Studio Underdog's website right now, this is the first bit of writing you will read on their website. Like, take my money. <laughs> so these watches came to fruition purely by and for enthusiasts. And I don't know about you, but for me, just looking at them, they make me excited about watch collecting again. It makes me feel like, I don't know, maybe it can be fun. <laughs> so I've been wearing this watch for, um, for a few weeks now, the lovely, wonderful Richard from Studio Underdog has let me keep this one for a good long while now. So thank you, Richard. And he even let me bring it on holiday to Scotland. So let's take a look at this chronograph. Now, obviously the first striking thing about these watches is the color palette. On the outside, these look like something conventional, a watch, but immediately you know, there's something weird about this thing. There's something different about this piece. They are bold, funky, but also there's a lot of attention to detail. There's a lovely color gradient on the chronograph subdial that's just like this really subtle, beautiful changing in color. At the tip of the chronograph hand, you'll see just a subtle color pop. Color pop. Yes. And the number indices in the watermelon is like little watermelon pips. And on the desert sky, a classic circle. I have genuinely never seen a watch that looks and feels like these ones do. And it looks like something that shouldn't work, but for some reason, it does. <laughs> so these watches are housed in a 38.5 mil case, and they're 13.6 mil thick. The domed sapphire accounting for about 3 millimeters of the thickness. It's a three-part case construction in stainless steel. So just for size reference, here's it on James's wrist and my wrist. And it's actually a really great unisex watch as well. Even my five and a half inch wrist, I feel totally at home in this watch. And I honestly think it's probably the perfect size on James's six and a half inch wrist. There's a 20 millimeter lug spacing and they come with an Italian Saffiano leather strap. The strap is actually a bit long for me. I would probably have to buy another strap to go on it. But I think that's because I have particularly small wrists. It, for normal people, it's fine. And with its integrated quick release spring bars, it's nice and easy to swap out for another strap anyways. But what about those who want to see the booty? Show me that booty. Girl, I want to see that booty. <laughs> So 
So she has a Seagull manual winding ST1901 movement. Which I find really interesting to look at, but it's actually a really pretty movement as well. You can see the jewels and the blue screws. I suspect that they're blue screws and not blued. I don't know. But I would definitely say blue screws, not blued. If you want to go really in depth on the movement, I highly suggest you check out just one more watches video on this piece. He really does a Ben Clymer deep dive into the seagull movement. So at 370 pounds, you're obviously not going to get like an along and sauna. Along and sauna. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it right. I'm sorry, German watchers. I tried. But you're not going to get like an ALS hand, hand finish like balance cock. <laughs> but it's a really cool movement with a rich history and it's really interesting to look at. It's a manual wind, so really easy and simple to operate. So to work the chronograph, you just hit the top pusher to start and stop, then the bottom to reset. But while we're on the chrono, this brings me to my one and only complaint, the tachometer. I honestly love almost everything about these quirky pieces, but with the dome sapphire, it can be really difficult to read the numbers on the tachymeter and it kind of distorts and warps them. I feel like it's really nitpicky though, but it's the only negative thing I have to say about these watches. Studio Underdog is actually a brand I personally really identify with. The founder, Richard, actually worded it perfectly. So I was on the phone with him just a few days ago and he described his watches as the serious unserious. So it's a really unserious watch. It's quirky, it's playful. I don't know, just a spot of fun. With serious mechanical watch specs and materials. Get in. Studio Underdog is making such a splash right now in the watch community and it doesn't surprise me one bit. I think they just speak to people who are sick of like the highbrow pretentious side of watch collecting. And I just think we all just want to have a little bit of fun again. You know? You feel me? But you know, I'd love to know what you guys think. What do you think to these pieces? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you think they're the worst things you've ever seen? or the best. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the bell, stick around. Do it. And until next time, you beautiful, fabulous watch nerds. Bye. James, say goodbye.